Philippines exports fell 24.7% in data out early this week, in the worst year-on-year -year reading since September 2011. Now today, we saw their interest rate maintained at 4% for the ninth straight meeting. I'm joined now with Gareth Leather, Emerging Markets Economist with Capital Economics, to find out more on what's happening in the Philippines. So Gareth, today we saw the Philippines leave its benchmark interest rate unchanged at 4%, mirroring neighbours like Thailand and Indonesia, whom are also refraining from easing, as they keep an eye on a potential rate increase from the Fed. Whether the Fed moves or not in its December meeting, will there be much volatility for the Philippines? There might be a little bit, but I think the key point here is that the Philippines has got a low level of foreign currency debt. Its currency is flexible. So although they'll certainly keep an eye on what the Fed is doing, it's, it's not the kind of be-all and end-all for the Philippines. I think a bigger focus for them is what's happening with the domestic economy and with inflation set to rise over the coming months and hopefully the economy to start to improve as well. You know, we saw no reason. It was no big surprise that the central bank left interest rates on hold today. Now, last time we spoke, you expressed some optimism over recovering exports in the region, noting that while growth in the Philippines has been a bit weak, it should start to recover towards the end of the year. Now, on data out earlier this week, we saw exports tumble down 24.7%, their most in four years. A dramatic shift from your original expectations. How did this negative data come about? I wouldn't place too much attention on just one month's worth of data. The trade data in particular is especially volatile. And a large part of the weakness at the moment actually reflects the, the plunge in commodity prices that we saw late last year rather than a sudden kind of weakening of external demand. And what we're expecting to see is that the, the base effect from the lower commodity prices will drop out of the annual comparison soon. And if global demand starts to recover as we expect, then exports or prospect for exports should also start to improve. And we expect kind of exports to return to positive territory probably by the start of next year. The Philippines isn't necessarily seen as being a big commodity exporter, but a lot of what it does export has a high commodity content. And so that even though it doesn't export the, the raw materials necessarily, it's still, its export performance has still been affected quite sharply by falling commodity prices. There is downside pressure, as you say, coming in from slower than expected global economic activity. But is there any areas showing upside potential? The Philippines has a lot going for it at the moment. I think the biggest kind of longer term pluses that it's got arguably is actually what's happening in China at the moment because of rising land and labor costs there. A lot of low end manufacturing is actually leaving the country, which means that the smaller, kind of cheaper countries in the rest of the region could potentially do quite well if it can grab a share of that market. Now, Vietnam is doing really well at the moment in, in, in kind of grabbing this kind of low-end stuff that's leaving China. But there's no reason that the Philippines, which is similarly low labor costs to Vietnam, but it's also seen a big improvement in its business environment over the past five years, could not potentially benefit the same way too. There's also other things that's got going for it as well. So the government's fiscal position is, is very good. So, you know, we expect government spending to remain quite strong, especially in areas such as infrastructure, where it's quite weak at the moment. Also, the demographic outlook in the Philippines is improving, so there'll be fewer kind of young children around and more, you know, a big increase in the workforce that we're expecting over the next few years as well. So it's got lots of things going for it, both in the short term and also the medium term as well. That was Gareth Leather with me there, looking at the Philippines. Now, if you enjoyed that, there's plenty more news and up-to-date analysis right here on Dukascopy TV, so be sure to click back.